Hello everyone, good afternoon from uh, Singapore and perhaps good evening to some of you there in the Pacific and welcome to the course on current international legal issues. My name is Emil Ian Valdez. I'm a researcher here at the National University of Singapore Center for International Law. We are very happy and excited to have all of you here with us today. The course will run this month of March, especially every Wednesday until the 23rd. We would like to inform you as well that we are currently live on Facebook through CIL Facebook page for the launching of this course. Mm -hmm. Now, without further ado, I would like to invite our very own director, Dr. Nilofer Oral, to say a few words before the welcome remarks of our distinguished guest. Dr. Nilofer, please. Thank you so much, Emil, and welcome to all of you. As the director of the Center for International Law at the National University of Singapore, I am truly privileged to welcome all of you to the inaugural lecture of the first CIL PIF course in international law. And I really have to thank the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat for their trust in CIL and their tremendous support to us and our team we value this relationship very much. Now to crown this inaugural event, we are also extremely honored to welcome two very distinguished and eminent persons. Mr. Henry Puna, the Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum, and from our own Singapore Ambassador and Professor Tommy Ko. Each will <laughs> provide some opening comments. Now I will give first a brief introduction to the Secretary General my introductions will be brief and, and really don't do justice um, uh, to their uh, illustrious careers. But Secretary General Puma is the 10th Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum and the first person from Cook Island to hold this post. He served as Prime Minister of the Cook Islands from 2010 until 2020, but he has been very active in Cook Islands governance as a foreign affairs minister and has played different leading roles, um, heading trade, labor, and transport. He's been a leader in marine issues, energy, renewables, climate change, um, and his leadership has earned Cook Islands global recognition for ocean sustainability and renewable energy. Mm. He has received an honorary doctorate in law from the University of South Pacific, Fiji, and served as chancellor um, in 2017-18. And one of his landmark global achievements was to spearhead the 2017 founding legislation establishing the world's largest multiple-use marine park, uh, the Mare Mona, and uh, we thank you really for this and to the Cook Islands. Uh, mm -hmm. Secretary General, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you kindly. His Excellency Professor Tommy Koh, Chair of the Governing Board of the Center for International Law, National University of Singapore, and Ambassador at Large for the Singapore Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Co-directors, Dr. Nulifer Aural and Professor Patricia Tellis. Delegates and participants from across the Blue Pacific. Friends, Ladies and gentlemen, Nisam Bulavinaka, Kiorana, and warm Pacific greetings from Suva, Fiji. Let me begin by acknowledging the important partnership between the Pacific Islands Forum members and Singapore, who was recently welcomed to our table as a forum dialogue partner. I look forward to our, constru our constructive and continued active partnership embodied through strategic opportunities such as this training. I also recognize and express my heartfelt thanks to the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, represented here today by the head of its Pacific Regional Office, Ms. Katie Greenwood. Thank you for the generous funding support for this event, 
and for your invaluable service to the region and indeed to the whole world. Let me also express my gratitude to the prestigious Center for International Law and the National University of Singapore for kindly accepting and organizing this dedicated learning opportunity for the Blue Pacific. I am very honored to share this platform with Professor Tom Nico. Thank you, Excellency, for your inspiring and unwavering global service, your leadership, and your ongoing legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, before you is a highly topical and exciting set of subjects for the next four weeks, covering international law, COP26 and climate ocean issues, statehood, and international human rights law. These issues go directly to the heart of our Blue Pacific, and in particular, the complicated humanitarian challenges affecting our citizens who are in the front line of the climate crisis. A crisis which was pronounced more loudly by the latest IPCC report released yesterday, noting our unique and alarming vulnerabilities in the Pacific. Mm. We are no longer speaking about what if, but what now? About how can we preserve our homes, our sovereignty, our territorial integrity, and our political independence? What do we do now to determine and protect our own future and our Pacific identity? A significant response was made by Pacific Islands Forum leaders in 2021 when they endorsed the Declaration on Preserving Maritime Zones in the face of climate change related sea level rise. This is indeed a turning point, a significant development, fundamental to our collective effort to influence international discourse and responses to the issue of climate change related sea level rise. Globally, we need to focus on the core issues that affect us all and how we should be working together rather than focusing on the issues that divide us. So it is with a heavy heart that I refer to the unfolding conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the scepter of nuclear war, and the innocent people being affected. It is a conflict that evokes a painful memory for us here in the Pacific, mm. a memory which we, com we commemorated yesterday of the mm. victims of the scourge of war and of nuclear weapons, victims for whom justice continues to be ever so evasive. Indeed, the international legal order rooted in the UN Charter is under threat. But it gives me hope that our global family are united in upholding and enforcing the rules-based order and the accountabilities we have built together. The 11th emergency session of the United Nations General Assembly, which took place yesterday, echoed a chorus of international solidarity right across the globe against this threat. Now, more than ever, we must heighten efforts and engagement at all levels. We must continuously promote the path of dialogue, of peaceful negotiation, of cooperation and diplomacy, of respect for and implementation of international law, international treaties, and of international norms. I am grateful that you will have deeper conversations about these contemporary international legal issues and systems <coughs> over the next weeks. I encourage all participants to make the most of this opportunity to equip yourselves with the tools and resources to defend the rule of law, in turn, securing our mm -hmm. nations and our humanity. Finally, I bid you all well wishes for the voyage ahead. It is my fervent hope that this pilot training program sparks a long-term partnership 
to build the capacities and skills of our Pacific people. On that note, Madaka Waka Levu, and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Secretary General. Um, and, and I could not agree with you more with the compelling words you said about the need for international law and the rules-based order. Um, so thank you again for your, your support and your kind words. Now, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Ambassador and Professor Tommy Cohen. I think Secretary General Pune, you said it so nicely, but I'll just add a few more facts about um, our own uh, Tommy Ko. Um, he is ambassador at large at the Foreign Ministry of Singapore. He has many achievements, but perhaps he's proudest of being president of the third conference and the United Nations uh, for the Law of the Sea that successfully adopted uh, the Law of the Sea Convention. He chaired uh, the UN Preparatory Committee for the 1992 Rio Earth Summit. He served as Singapore's permanent representative to the UN in New York, ambassador to the US, Canada, and Mexico. Um, he's been the UN Secretary General's special envoy to Russia, Estonia, yes. Latvia, and Lithia, Lithuania. He's been Singapore's chief negotiator for trade agreements. Um, he was formerly dean of the law faculty, but oh. most important, he's oh, chair yes. of CIL's oh own governing board. Um, dear Professor Tommy Ko, the floor is yours. Um, Your Excellency Secretary General Henry Puna, uh, my good friend and colleague, Dr. Nilo Fu Oral, Professor Patricia Gabal Teres, a senior member of the International Law Commission, friends from the Pacific Island Forum, ladies and gentlemen. International law is important to all countries. It is especially important to small countries. Recent events in Ukraine have reminded us in a dramatic and tragic manner of the importance of the international rule of law. International law is both a shield and a sword for small countries. The Pacific Island Forum is an intergovernmental organization with 18 member countries and territories. They occupy the vast Pacific Ocean. Although the land territory may be small, their exclusive economic zones are enormous. This is the logic behind the decision to call themselves large ocean states. We are witnessing in the Pacific an intense competition for influence between two great powers. Down here in Southeast Asia, ASEAN is faced with the same challenge. We are trying very hard to maintain our unity and our neutrality in the face of this challenge. I have some acquaintance with the good work which the PIF Secretariat has done over many years for its members. This is because two of my very good friends, Ambassador Neroni Slate of Samoa and Ambassador Dame McTaylor of Papua New Guinea, had served with distinction as the eighth and ninth Secretary Generals of PIF. I want to mention another distinguished son of the Pacific, the late Ambassador Satya Nandan of Fiji. Satya had made an indispensable contribution to the negotiation and adoption of the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. We celebrate the 40th anniversary of UNCLOS this year. I'm happy to share with the participant that the Center for International Law and the National University of Singapore Press 
have published an important book on Satya Nandan's contributions to the development of modern law of the sea. Singapore attaches great importance to our relations with the PIF. We do so because we share an affinity with the majority of the PIF members. We are small countries because we face similar challenges such as global warming and sea level rise. And because of our mutual commitment to international law and the peaceful settlement of disputes. On global warming and sea level rise, Singapore shares the view of the majority of PIS members that the target should be to keep the rise of global temperature to below 1.5 degrees centigrade. For them and for Singapore, this target is not just desirable, it is an imperative because our very existence is at stake. Singapore has made a modest contribution to the development journeys of the members of PIF by sharing our development experience with more than 5,300 officials from the PIF member. To conclude, I want to thank PIF for having admitted Singapore in January this year as a dialogue partner. I wish to record my gratitude and appreciation to two very good friends, Ambassador Virgis Matthews and Ambassador Mary Seed Ching, our former and current special envoy to the PIF. Thank you very much. Thank you.